Hi friends, a few weeks ago I asked members of our Facebook community to submit photographs of their favourite dog with a view to me painting a full length tutorial here on YouTube. There were literally hundreds of photographs submitted and it was such a joy to look through them so thank you if you're one of those community members that submitted a photograph of their pet. If you haven't been chosen this time don't worry I have kept a few back which we're going to be painting at a later date but I'm delighted to say that I have chosen this beautiful girl. Her name is Bentley. At the time of the photograph she was two years old and I think she's a little bit older now. Bentley is a French Bulldog and a huge thank you to her owner Cynthia who allowed us to paint this beautiful beautiful girl today for this tutorial. If I haven't picked your dog don't worry there will be tips and tricks as we work through the tutorial so hopefully you can apply it to your own pet painting. So without any further ado let's get into the painting tutorial. It's slightly longer than usual grab yourself a cup up and let's go. Okay, I'm using my Etcher sketchbook today with a cold press 300 GSM paper and as you can see I've traced down an outline of the dog like this and you can just draw it freehand if you want to but I highly recommend you trace it down. It's a little trickier this one so we provide you with a free reference photo and line drawing of course and I've swatched out my colours here and I'll tell you the colours I'm going to be using as we work through. This is the colour chart I use to match my colours and if you want to make your own I'll link it on the top of your screen for you to take a look. This is the little um, etcher palette that I use to mix all my colours. It has two separate um, palettes here in the kit and with lots of different wells and they're ceramic so they don't stain and super easy to use. I've got a selection of brushes here including my very old spotter that I use for mixing, a clean glass of water, some kitchen paper and we are good to go. Now for this little painting I decided to use a background and for this I'm going to use some gouache paint. I'm going to mix a really pale minty sort of pistachio color green. I had tested it out on some scrap paper before and I really like this kind of colour. I thought it would sit really well on the background of Bentley here. So I'm going to show you how I mixed it up. Just a puddle of white here in my palette along with a smidgen of ultramarine deep and the lemon yellow. These are just a primary colour set from Holbein that I bought from Jackson's which I will link in the description box along with all the colours and materials that I'm going to be using for today's tutorial. Now you don't have to do the background, if you don't want to you can leave it white but I just felt this was crying out for um, a background colour so and of course you can use watercolour if you want to. So with the colour mixed up I'm using my number 8 flat faux squirrel brush, this one's from Zen Art. Of course if you want to use a washi tape to do um, sort of a frame before you paint this on you can do but just for speed I'm, print, I'm sort of painting it in with my flat brush and this is my number eight size round. Again this is a faux squirrel from Zen Art so use any brushes that you have that you feel comfortable with and you can see here the texture of the gouache that I've mixed up and I really really like the colour here. So I'm working around the outside of the pencil line. This is why it's really important to keep your pencil lines really clean and really sharp. You don't want any sketchy edges, you just want the pencil lines to be guiding you where you're going to be applying the paint. To stop the gouache from going patchy, I'm just going over the bits that have dried here and just taking a fresh layer of paint and picking up that dry edge and taking it to the pencil line like this. And I'll continue the process throughout the background as you can see. Just using the flat brush to go against that pencil line where I have framed the photograph and just working it through, adding a tiny bit of water if you need to just to get that paint moving and all you have to do then is just let your gouache dry before we continue with painting with watercolour. Just adding a tiny bit more white gouache to the mix here and applying it as you can see. This paper takes both the gouache and the watercolour really, really well. I love this little sketchbook. I've done many tutorials um, using this sketchbook here on YouTube 
and I found that it gives really, really great results. I really like cold pressed paper. You know, if you're used to my videos, you know it's one of my favorites. So just apply in the gouache like this and all we can do, let it dry and then think about the colors that we're going to mix to paint this beautiful little dog. So everything's really dry now, so we have to think about the base colours that we're going to use. And these are the colours that I've chosen. They are Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Piemontite Genuine by Daniel Smith, Quinacridone Red, Windsor & Newton, and Ivory Black, Windsor & Newton. But if you don't have these colours, use the nearest that you have. And if you're struggling with your colour matching, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help you. Now remember, watercolour painting is all about working from light to dark and retaining your whiter areas. You're going to be working in thin layers and making sure that each layer is dry. The colours that I've mixed here are buff titanium, buff titanium with a bit of quinacridone red, and the brown colour that you see towards the top is Piemontite Genuine by Daniel Smith. Now this colour is rather unique, um, we'll talk about it later, but as you can see I've applied the water all over the ear here and I'm dropping in the buff titanium. So this is wet in wet, where we are wetting the paper first and dropping in our pigments later. It just means it's super easy to apply and it means that that paint will spread only where you've applied the water, so make sure that you stay within your pencil line. So buff titanium going on and then we have a mixture of buff titanium with the quinacridone red. Same on the other side. The brush that I'm using by the way is a number four silver line round. It's a synthetic brush and this is from Jackson's. And you can see me here dropping in the Piemontite on the tips of the ears. Now watercolour is all about building up your layers slowly once each colour is dry and it is notorious for having the ugly duckling stage so make sure that you stay right until the end of this video so that you can see that process unfold and watch this beautiful little dog come to life. Just applying a tiny bit of this pink tone, this is quinacridone red, really really watered down, straight onto the paper, wet on dry. Dipping my brush into water, patting it dry and spreading it through. Dropping in the Piemontite, the ears are still damp so this is wet and wet and you can see how that colour is blurring into the wet paint giving it a lovely soft edge. So remember these are just our base layers where we're going to be building up our colours as we work through the painting but it's really important to get these in place because these colours will guide us as to where we're going to apply the darker colours when we need to. This is Piemontite again, just dropping it in. So Piemontite is a kind of browny purpley colour and it is from Daniel Smith's Primatech range. If you don't have this colour you could use something like um, Perilee and Violet maybe with a tiny bit of Van Dyke Brown mixed in. But this is one of the colours that I highly recommend that you do get if you're into, if you want to buy some colours because it really is a very versatile colour. I do use it quite a bit. You could also maybe use something like a Potter's Pink. So you saw me there adding a tiny bit more pigment. So now that this ear is dry, I'm applying it carefully with my number four brush and patting it dry on the kitchen paper having cleaned it and just pulling it into that existing paint using a kind of stippling, kind of feather-like touch. So I'm just tapping it into the existing wash. Again, this part is now dry, so see how I'm applying the paint first of all, cleaning my brush in that tiny puddle of water that I have on my palette, and then very, very gently using the tip of my brush to spread it into the existing dry wash. So if you're wondering why I've got this puddle of water in the middle of my palette, it just means that I'm not dipping my brush into my glass and flooding it with water, which can make the paint splurge everywhere. So a really good tip is to have this tiny puddle of water and use it in the way that I'm doing here. So this is quinacridone red that you can see me adding here. And it gives, um, because I've added a lot of water, it has that really gentle pink hue and it looks really natural on the ears as you can see. So once again, Piemontite is going on and blending it through with that damp brush. I do have a particular way of applying my paint and I have done a separate video on this explaining it 
in a little more detail and if you would like to watch that I will link it on the top of your screen so that you can click through and take a look after this video. So you can see how I'm building up the colour on Bentley's ears just by applying this colour wet on dry and always make sure that you blend your paint through once you've applied it so that you have this kind of really soft edge. This is my flat synthetic number two brush and I'm using it to tidy up any messy edges. So we're back to the, the main part of the painting. So I'm applying in water. Once again, we're going to be working wet on wet on this area here. So you can see where I'm applying the water exactly where I want to drop that paint. So taking care to stay inside the pencil line. Um, this is buff titanium with a tiny bit of lamp black and switching between that and the buff titanium on its own. This will give a really soft natural looking wash and once this is dry it'll give us um, an idea of where we're going to build up the colours later on. But this is just to get our base colours in place ready to build up those colours later. So buff titanium with lamp with ivory black dropping in here. This is wet in wet and I'm just sort of randomly dropping in the colours where I think I want some of the darker values to be later on. These will just splurge naturally into the paint and they will dry a lot lighter anyway so I'm not too worried at this point where the paint is dropped in, just roughly where I want the darker values to be. So I'm just using the residual paint here on my brush and dropping in a tiny bit more of the buff titanium as you can see me doing here. We're just painting in our first wash. Well, this is just buff titanium on its own and we're just painting in where we want that really light shadow to be. And just blend it into the paper to make it look really soft and natural and also taking the same colour around the, I suppose you call it the bridge of the nose. And mix in a tiny bit of ivory black there, but you can see how weak and watery the paint is at this point. Everything's now dry and I have ivory black here. This one is from Winsor & Newton and we're going to have a nice strong puddle here of this mixed in with both the buff titanium and I have a separate puddle there with a tiny bit of quinacridone red. Notice how I'm painting around the eye light in the middle of ba uh, Bentley's eye. We want to go um, slightly wider than we would um, want so that we give ourselves that tiny bit of leeway to work around it. Um, so it always goes slightly bigger than you think you're going to need and then you can take your paint closer as you want to. So this is just ivory black and it's sort of a medium consistency and uh, slightly more watery towards the outside edge there and I'm just taking it well inside that pencil line and just blending it through with a brush like this and I'm going to do the same on the other eye where we have that tiny little highlight. I'll work around that as well. So at the start of this video I mentioned that we have a free line drawing and reference photograph to accompany this tutorial and if you'd like to access those there are a couple of ways. First of all you need to join our Facebook group where we have all of the line drawings and reference photographs to accompany our tutorials right here on YouTube and by joining it means that you can post up your finished paintings and of course have some feedback from me and our other members and so I'll put the link in the description box underneath this video. But if you are not on Facebook, don't worry, I'll put the line drawing and the reference photograph right at the end of this video so that you can screenshot it and print it out that way and you can join in from there.
This photograph was provided by a lady called Cynthia who let us paint this beautiful dog of hers called Bentley and this was something that we ran on our Facebook group a few weeks ago and um, we do something like this from time to time so if you want to join us over there do consider we are an amazing group, fantastic people and we have a lot of fun and a lot of chats and um, there's, all, there's always something going on so you'll get some great feedback from everybody and it's a great way to learn listening to other people talk about your work and it's all very very positive stuff so do consider joining us so the first layer is dry that's the buff titanium so i'm now going over it with the ivory black in a mid-tone consistency so that's just with a tiny bit of water and you can see how movable it is taking great care to work around the colors that i've just applied notice and how i'm using a light pressure on the brush cleaning it in the same way and now I've got my damp brush I'm just pulling it out to create the illusion of these tiny little fine hairs around the eye like this. Once I've cleaned my brush in the water it's really important that I pat it on the kitchen paper that way I'm not flooding my paper with water and the paint won't bloom so once you've cleaned it make sure you pat it dry and then go in using this tapping motion as I'm doing here. So this video is a little bit longer than usual. It's about 45 minutes. So by breaking this down in easy to follow steps or breaking it down step by step as you can see me doing here. So be sure to stay right until the end where you can see the entire process unfold and watch Bentley um, come to life on paper here. I really hope that I've done you proud, Cynthia. Do let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more of these dog paintings, do let me know in the comments below. I'm always interested to find out what you think about um, trying something a little bit different. Usually on this channel, we paint botanicals. We have done a few other things lately, um, but I am primarily a botanical artist, but I really enjoy painting um, different things. So I'm loving painting this painting today, but do let me know in the comments what you think. And if you are finding value in this video, do consider giving it a thumbs up. If you are finding value in this video, show me some love and give it a great big thumbs up. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and I'd really appreciate it. And if you are new to my channel, just to let you know that we do um, release content every Tuesday. So you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that little bell notification so that you'll be notified every time we upload new videos and you won't miss anything. You can see how I'm just using that kind of stippling motion with this damp paint just to create that lovely sort of illusion of this kind of fur around her eyes. This is a mixture of buff titanium with the Piemontite and I'm just working around her nose like this, keeping out of the brightest highlights. just taking it around that area and we have the buff titanium mixed with ivory black here. Notice how thin the paint is at this point. As I said, if we go in too thickly with our paint too quickly, it will become muddy and it won't look right. It's really important to keep the first layers, the first washes really watery. That way we can build up with confidence knowing that our paint won't look overworked and it won't look muddy. And it also takes the kind of scariness out of it. So by putting a lighter wash on, first of all, it just gives you a little bit more confidence with your painting. So notice how I'm applying this mixture around her mouth like this. So this is just the watered down black. And then once again, blending it through in the way that I mentioned earlier on. So you want to keep your pencil lines really simple. But this is why we provide you with a digital line drawing, just to make it a little bit easier for you to trace down. Working around the pink area that, that I've applied to begin with, again, using this watery mix of paint. And already you can see how Bentley's coming to life here. Just by already applying these different tonal values and 
just a few colours. We are using a very, very limited palette today and you can see me here once again just blending those colours through with that damp brush. I ought to mention if you are on Instagram, do consider joining us there. We are at the Wonders of Watercolour where we post mostly daily and you can see behind the scenes stuff, things that are coming up on YouTube, um, some tips and tricks and also a few fun things with reels and all that kind of stuff. So if you are on Instagram, please join us over there. We'd love to see you. So you can see how I'm dipping between the colours on my palette. I'm not being too fussy about the colours that I'm using here, as long as they are watery enough just to guide me where I'm going to be applying the colours later on. But for now, it's all about building up the colours, all about getting those layers in place so that we know where we're going when we're building them up once they are dry. This is still, I'm still using my number four synthetic round here. If you have got the spotter brushes that I've recommended in the past, do use those. And I've accidentally gone onto the gouache at the top here, um, but I think it's fine. Back to ivory black. And you can see now I've mixed quite a lot of pigment in a thicker consistency, but it's not a dry mix. It's still quite sort of gloopy mixture. And I'm using my number zero round brush from Tintoretto. Again, this is a synthetic brush and it's actually more like a liner brush I guess but I'm using ivory black and then a tiny bit of buff titanium and you can see how I'm using this kind of wiggly motion to put the paint on and blend it into the paper as before. So any brush that you have with a fine point will do here and I'm dropping in the buff titanium onto that wet paint and now that we've got the eye colours in place and they're dry we can start to build them up with a thicker mix of the ivory black. The guesswork has gone, so we know exactly where we're going to be going with this color now, working around that highlight. This is the number zero brush. So you can see how I'm taking this colour all over the middle of the eye and working gently around that highlight. If you don't keep the highlight in place, don't worry too much. You could always go around it with some gouache, some white gouache or something like that. But it's just generally good practice to keep out of our whites when we're working with watercolour and it helps you control your brush. So do give it a try. And gentle strokes around the eye like this, once again with that stipple in motion to create the illusion of that fluffy fur. And the same on the other side. And just taking some of that watered down black over that very white colour here and some buff titanium at the top. As I said, I will list all of the colours that I'm using and all the materials in the description box underneath this video. So if you want to take a look, if there's anything that you're struggling with, I will link them in the description box underneath this video. So these brushes are really great for getting some detail. So just some fur around the eye like this. Just gently putting it in where I feel it is needed. The paint is still quite watery there and the thicker mix of the paint, this is the ivory black, working around the area that we've already done, that guesswork has gone, so it's stress-free painting. So I'm just taking the black colour around the eye like this just sort of outlining it a little bit, just giving it a little bit more depth. Trying to stay as true to the photograph as I can. Although we are not after sort of photorealism here, it's just a fun painting of this little dog. So cleaning my brush, we have some buff titanium and just dotting it on as before.
So again, I'm just picking up that paint and using a really light touch with this brush to get those colors in place. I'm just going over the colors that I've already applied just to give that a little bit more depth of color. You can see the kind of brush strokes that I'm using to give the illusion of her fur. So now that the nose is dry, I've picked up some buff titanium and ivory black mixed together and just following that pencil line that we have in place. When you do your line drawing, you want your pencil lines to be as light as you can get away with. You don't really want to be seeing the pencil line, so keep it as simple as you can. As I said earlier on, which is why we, one of the reasons why we provide you with a... Um, a digital version of the line drawing. It's a nice clean outline for you to follow so that there's less margin for error. But of course, if you want to draw it freehand, you can do. I prefer to trace them down, which means I can I get sort of more time to do the painting and press on with that. So you can see how I've just painted in that line where her mouth is. And then I'm using those feathery strokes as I've used before, just to soften those edges and create a little bit of texture around her mouth like this. Bringing that line down with the liner brush, or this is actually the number zero round brush like this. And then I'm just going to use those feather strokes again to push up that line to soften it through and just make it look a little bit more natural. And the same on the other side as well. We want both sides to have that kind of natural blur. And just working around this part here, you'll notice there's a little bit of a highlight on the top of Bentley's lip here. And I want to try and keep that light at the moment where her sort of mouth is closed. We can see this little highlight. We want to try and keep that in place if we can, working around the bottom part here. And just keep in mind that you want to stay out of that pink area for now. I could have used a slightly bigger brush to do this, but I find this gives um, the sort of right level of control. I really like this brush. And you can see how I'm just applying this uh, ivory black around the initial ivory black wash that we did. As I said, that's taken the guesswork out of it now and it means that I don't have to worry where I'm going with the darker value. Always looking at my reference photograph as I go through. In case you are wondering, I do keep my reference photograph um, on my iPad as I'm working. My iPad's to my, le to my left here and I'm constantly looking at that. So if I do slow down sometimes, it means that I'm looking to my left hand side to see exactly where I'm going. Um, I do tend to edit those bits out, but in case you're wondering why I'm a little bit slower today, that's why. I want to try and do this girl justice. Okay, so I'm picking up a tiny bit of buff titanium and I'm applying this in the area where the eyes are here. You'll notice from the reference photograph that there's a kind of shadow area where I'm applying it here and of course a little highlight above the eye. So we just want to put these in because at the moment it's looking a tiny bit flat. Okay, so make sure that everything's dry and we can start to build up our colors once again. I've cleaned up my palette and we're going to be using the same mixes as before. To recap, we have Buff Titanium, Buff Titanium with Piemontite Genuine, and Piemontite Genuine with Ivory Black. Once again, go into my Tintoretto brush and a nice clean mix and we're now going to start to build up these colors once more. It 
So this is the Piemontite Genuine with Ivory Black going on here and I'm just taking it into the area around her nose, keeping out of the upper part where we want that to keep its kind of whitish tone. So the paper is a kind of off-white colour of um, Bentley's natural skin tone. So I'm trying to keep out of this area at the top where her kind of nose area meets her eye. I'm not sure what that's called, but we just want to keep that little highlight as clean as we can. And the same on the other side. So you can really take your time with this painting. Um, this is the Piemontite Genuine working around her nose where you can just about see the pencil lines here. By using really small brush strokes like this it gives you full control of your painting and helps you decide where you want to go. So just really really take your time. This is Piemontite with Ivory Black. Piemontite is one of Daniel Smith's Primatech colours. Um, you don't necessarily have to use it for this tutorial, but I really like the colour and you can see how it's separating in my palette here. It has a lot of pink within it and it's just a lovely colour to use. If you like painted botanicals as I do, it's really great for things like bark and all that kind of stuff. But it has this really beautiful pink undertone and I have used it on things like magnolia and sort of anything with a really subtle hue. So it's definitely one for your kit, I think. Okay, so once again, I'm wetting my paper with my brush here and I'm going to be dropping in the darker values. This is ivory black and once again, using that kind of dotting motion to give the illusion of texture where we want it to be. Notice how you can get that lovely soft blur again. I really love wet on wet. It just makes you, it just gives it that lovely look where you don't have that hard edge and it just does the hard work for you. And I'm just blending it in with my damp brush like this. Working around this area on Bentley's nose where we have this tiny little freckle, I guess you'd call it. Um, I think I did it slightly wrong shape, but um, hopefully it doesn't matter too much. Just working around it slowly and blending those edges together. Next we have Piemontite with a tiny bit of ivory black. So I'm mixing, this is quinacridone red here. And I'm just applying this with a tiny bit of Piemontite and we're going over the area on the underside. It looks very bright at the moment. Um, but when we do our glaze later on, it'll dumb it down a little bit. So don't be too alarmed that it looks too pink. So Piemontite, and we're just using this to drop in some color where we've applied that pinky tone because you'll notice um, from the photograph that there's kind of like a, a sort of I guess you call them little hairs under here, so we're just dropping that in with your Piemontite, or you could use your ivory black. So dipping between these two colours, which is ivory black and Piemontite, and the two mixed together. And now I'm using this opportunity to sharpen up those edges that we've painted in with the lighter tones to begin with. I'm applying some water and dropping in the ivory black, working this tiny area wet in wet.
just working around these little creases on her face. This is the watered down version of Ivory Black. I'm blending them through as before, just using the tip of my brush here. Just adding a tiny bit more ivory black to the mixture and you can see where I'm applying it here. I felt like it needed a little bit more of a darker value. I'm working around her mouth like this. I'm adding some more ivory black and some Piemontite to the mix and once again going over the nose using my fine brush like this and we will of course be blending that through. Carrying on building up those layers to give this a little bit more dimension and a little bit more form. I'm just adding a tiny bit of quinacridone red here. You see I've applied it to the tip of her nose and a tiny bit under her mouth again. But like I said, don't worry if it looks too pink because it will dry a little bit lighter and we're going to be doing a plain water glaze which will remove a little bit of it anyway. So a tiny bit more here. So I'm applying some paint, some water to the outside edge here and I'm dropping in the Piemontite because of course at the moment that outside edge is looking a little bit flat so it just needed a little bit of shadow here. So Piemontite goes on and the same on the other side I'm going to just drop in the ivory black on this section. So work in wet in wet here and we can blend those through in a moment. Just using the tip of that damp brush. We have full control of the paint this way. So all I'm doing here is going over the lines that I've already applied and working round with the ivory black. I'm blending it through, this time with my number four silver line round. So just applying a really watery mix of ivory black here with the existing paint on my brush. 
just to get rid of that stark white colour that's there. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit on the other side as well. Right up to the pencil line and blending it through. So at this point I'm just glazing over the entire thing with plain water. Everything has to be dry when you do this. It just merges everything together really, really gently once everything's dry. And then of course you have to let this dry completely before we go on to the next stage. Just wanted to drop in a tiny bit more of the Piemontite and the Ivory Black just to this element here. And just strengthening up the shadow area on the right hand side. So I'm taking the Piemontite to the bottom section of her ear like this and sharpening up that outside edge and this little fold. Working around the ear with the residual paint on my brush, this is Piemontite. So I'm using a tiny bit of gouache here. I had some white gouache left over when I mixed and I put it into an empty pan and I'm just using this in a thickish mix to create some fine hairs on her face. Now, of course, you haven't got to do this, but if you do happen to have some uh, Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White or some white gouache or something like that, then do give it a go. I'm now strengthening up the black. So we are adding um, a thicker mix here of ivory black to enhance the areas that we um, sort of washed out a bit earlier when we did the plain water glaze, just to enhance them and bring it all together. And just carrying on the process like this. So at this point, all I'm doing is going over it with a plain water glaze again, just to unify everything. Everything is dry at this point before I do this, otherwise the colors will completely bleed together. So it's important that everything's dry. And then we'll let that settle into the paper completely, let it dry entirely, and then we can go over and just add our final details. Here just to let you know I'm using my flat brush here to get rid of that hard edge. So at this point it's just a repetition of everything I've said to you already so I'm going to stop talking and let you watch the rest of this video in peace. A huge thank you to Cynthia and to Bentley for letting us use your photograph. Um, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Stay until the end where I'm going to put up that reference photograph and line drawing Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.